Welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. Always a pleasure to host with you. Uh, it is. It's, it's great to be here with WHMB TV Channel 40, Real People, Real yeah. Voices. And we're reaching more people now. Yes, we are. Stronger Listen, signal? Yeah, stronger signal. And I, and I think our viewership is going to increase. And yeah. so we already reach over a million people. Hope we can reach more. And the people who want to be a part of Real Voices, Real People, all over the city yeah. and all over the state. And we can also uh, thank our sponsors today. Th yes, Lee Kossop and Crawley are still with us. Also have the Marion County Health Department. They're still with us. And we have the Fervent Prayer Christian Academy. And we're looking forward to, uh, to doing some work uh, with the Martin University um, give a here real soon. Yeah. And speaking of the Marion County Health Department, we have someone here. Yes. From the department. From the department. But first of all, I think we need to say hello to our friend in Kokomo, Aunt Jeanette. Aunt Jeanette. Aunt Jeanette, we're so happy that you're watching <laughs> 86. us 86. 86 years old. She attends the Second Baptist Church there, Historical Baptist Church in Kokomo. We and, want you to and know watches that. watches the show every every, every Sunday. We hear that you are our number one fan. And if you can feel this, I'm going to give it to you right now. Mm, God bless you. <laughs> And we just thank God for people like Aunt Jeanette yeah. watching the show. Watching the show. And if they miss it, they can go to YouTube and look up. The very first one. The very first one, WHMB TV 40, mm -hmm. and also on Facebook. Right, right. Go to Facebook, and while you're there, like we, us like on us Facebook. Like us there. Like us on Facebook. Yeah, it's going to be a great show today. Uh, we are joined by the Marion County Health Department. I think you're going to really enjoy what we have for you, please. Please stay with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. We're joined by Carla Johnson from the Healthy Homes Department at the Marion County Health Department. But uh, the name of your department or role is a lot more extensive than that. So I said, we'll let you do that. Right. It is actually the Healthy Homes Environmental Consumer Management and Senior Care Department. And we cover a, a, a large range of things um, from an environmental perspective. So that sort of the attempt was to, to make that name encompass a little bit more of what we do. And part of what you all do is the Healthy Homes. Talk about that. We can start with Healthy Homes. Healthy Homes is actually a larger movement that we started out as the Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Program. That was many years ago. Um, as the, the direction changed, even on, on a federal level, as the, um, the scope broadened to include more Healthy Homes issues, we wanted to make sure that we stayed aligned with those, with the federal agencies in terms of what we wanted to uh, focus on as well. So Healthy Homes includes things such as asthma, asthma triggers, moisture control, um, lead and lead poisoning always will always be faithful to lead and lead poisoning issues, um, trip and fall hazards, those kind of areas. So it, it broadens it beyond just lead poisoning prevention into other areas that make it difficult for people to stay in the homes or um, may be a barrier to them. So lead poisoning has been your platform. Lead poisoning is where we got our roots, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, and when we think about lead poisoning, uh, you know, back when I started some 20 years ago, it's been about 20, maybe 22 years ago, uh, the level of concern was 10. Now, many, many years ago, and when I say 10, I say 10 micrograms per deciliter of lead in the blood. And when we talk about blood lead poisoning, blood leads um, indicate recent exposure. Once a child has had lead in the body for a while, the lead that's been in the body starts to settle in things like the bones and, and teeth and things like that. So your blood lead level is going to just indicate um, a recent exposure. But that level used to be 10 micrograms per deciliter. Um, many years ago, it used to be 25. There were times when I've talked to doctors where it was 30 and they didn't do interventions until it was you know, 30 or 40 or 50. Uh, what we know now is that there's no safe level of lead in the child's blood. And so given that there's no safe level and the effects of the lead poisoning is um, permanent, then we've lowered that level down now to five micrograms per deciliter, and even that's still too high. But what that means is that when 
we, a, t a child is tested, and this, and when I say five, I mean in Marion County alone, because sure. statewide, there's still gonna be some jurisdictions that may be following up at 10. But um, when a child gets their blood tested, we follow up with an environmental investigation, um, and we try to help that child find out, or help the family find out where this child's getting exposed. And so that could be from the soil, it can be from the paint, it can be from sometimes consumer products and things like that. Um, I know there's been a, a recent um, issue with lead and water. Generally, that's not necessarily the case, but for the most part, it's going to be the, the largest area of exposure for a child is going to be in the home. So th does your area of responsibility make it possible for folks to get free testing, or is there a, a fee to it? Nope, everything we do is free. And so, uh, yeah, we would just, and, and they don't have to, a child, Anybody who wants our services can call us and ask for our services when they're in Marion County. Um, but it is, and, and if they're statewide, they can certainly call the State Department of Health or their local health department. Sometimes a local health department will have these services available as well, but they're all free. They can just give us a call. We can do an investigation of the home. We can check the home uh, for lead-based paint um, or lead-based paint hazards. Water, we can certainly test the water. Um, anything they're interested in. If they want their child tested, we can test a child, although we really recommend that the child have a regular physician that they do their uh, blood lead testing with. But we can do that as well. It's all free. What is the percentage of homes that are affected in Marion County with lead? Ooh, that would be a tough one. I don't have that statistic, um, but if anybody's curious, they can always call and ask. Mm -hmm. um, but we will. what we can do is look at the homes that are going to be at highest risk. So we know that lead-based paint was outlawed in 1978 for residential use. So there is still lead-based paint out there, but it's not for residential use. You look at the highways, the markings, mm -hmm. things like that, because it's durable. It makes for some, you know, durable paint. Um, so anything prior to 78 has a potential to have lead-based paint. Things prior to 1960 have a higher likelihood of having lead-based paint, and things prior to like 1940, I think it is, really have the highest likelihood. Mm -hmm. So if you live in an older home, um, it's probably likely that there's lead-based paint. What I like to tell people, though, is having lead-based paint is not a reason to become afraid and, you know, leave the house if they can't afford it. Lead-based paint by itself is not going to be that problem. Lead-based paint in deteriorated condition is the problem. So if you know exactly in your home where lead-based paint is and you make sure it's not deteriorated, you're going to be okay. It's when it's deteriorated that that's the problem. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah. We always hear uh, Brother Jackson about lead-based paint and how it can affect someone, but you said there's a process to it. It, it has to be, yes. It, the, so chipping and peeling paint is going to be a problem because the dust, it mm -hmm. beats dust, and it doesn't take much to, to poison a child. And the children are the ones that we're most concerned mm -hmm. about because they're the ones that the, the blood lead crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes permanent mm -hmm. changes into the child's brain during a period of development. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're most concerned about. Adults, um, if they're going to have lead poisoning issues, it's usually going to be an acute case of lead poisoning from an occupation or from a hobby. And they will recover unless, you know, I mean, they, they, they will recover. High enough is, is fatal for anybody. Right. But yes, it is the deterioration of lead-based paint. If it's in your soil, it is the dust. It's going to be the dust. So there's, you know, you're going to either ingest it or inhale it. Well, Carla, we have about two minutes left in this segment. Uh, you also um, are responsible for the asthma control. And my daughter has asthma, so <coughs> what, what exactly does that involve? So the asthma, we have an asthma grant. We actually recently just got the asthma grant. And the asthma grant is not going to provide direct services in this case. What we're looking at doing in, with the asthma grant, and this is a CDC grant, is trying to increase uh, the, the awareness among physicians to work with um, asthma patients to do their own self-monitoring, to make sure that they are aware of uh, the triggers that they have in their homes or you know, wherever they are that they have triggers. But it's going to be more building a network, building a uh, professional network within Marion County and then expanding that out to larger counties. We do have some asthma, um, we do do some asthma programming in our department. Our asthma <laughs> grant does not deal with individual programming, but we will work with um, individuals and helping them find the asthma triggers in their home. Yeah, so important. Uh, we got a lot to share with you. We'll be back after this.
Welcome back, and we're joined by one of the good folks from the Marion County Health Department, who's also one of our sponsors. Yes, they are. Happy to have Ms. Yeah. Johnson here with us. Uh, I mean, she has a plethora of things that she, she works with. A lot. A lot of things yeah. that she works with. But I'm, you know, uh, very much interested now. Uh, it's almost a, a forgotten population mm -hmm. um, because of what we hear about millennials uh, mm -hmm. transitioning in life. Uh, our seniors. Right. Uh, you have a senior care management program. Tell us about that and how our seniors can get in contact with, with some of the benefits that you offer. Okay. So the senior care management is really one that I think is important just because we want to make sure that people can stay in their home as long as possible. And I think that seniors staying in the home um, sta that stabilizes your neighborhoods. It's a good crime prevention tool. When you have someone that's home, that's aware of what's going on in the neighborhood when everyone else is at work, the seniors are the ones that you want there. You want people to know what's going on. But we need to make sure that we do things to keep them in their homes. Um, economically, it's just a better it's just a better plan. On a, on a human cost experience, it's a better plan for people to stay at home in the homes that they've raised their children and their families in and they want to stay there. But sometimes that's not possible or sometimes things make it difficult. And so what we try to do is, there are, is we try to address the issue from an environmental perspective. So there are lots of programs that address things from a clinical perspective, you know, barriers that keep, you know, they, that will prevent someone from staying in their home. And when we look at the things that we do in my department, everything is from an environmental perspective. So we look at, we, we, we can only choose two things that we could focus on, and that would be respiratory conditions or fall hazards. And if there are barriers that, uh, threaten a senior's ability to stay home that are respiratory or fall related, then we will intervene. And what we do is we, we first provide them with a, a healthy homes assessment. And so all of our healthy homes assessments really are geared towards the population in whose home we're assessing. So for instance, if we have a senior, we may look at things a little differently. Um, is there adequate lighting? Maybe there needs to be more than just the minimum st uh, code standard for lighting. There should be more lighting. Um, handrails. handrails on stairs are code requirement on at least one side, but we know that handrails on both sides Help is really seniors. better. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, bathrooms, railing and, railings and bathrooms and things like that. So we do a healthy homes assessment really geared more towards this, a, a senior in mind. Uh, door handles, for instance, the leopard door handles are better and those sort of things. And then, so eliminating fall hazards in this case. And a really interesting fall hazard that I've, it's a fall hazard for anyone, but it's really going to be a fall hazard if someone falls and breaks their hips and now they're no longer going to be able to stay in their home. And that's the throw rugs. So we have mm. lots of people that like those throw rugs on their hardwood floors. And you slip and fall on one of those and you're going to, you know, probably hurt yourself. But one of the challenges we run into is that maybe someone doesn't want to give up their throw rug. So we offer them really simple solutions. And a very simple solution in this case, if you really aren't going to give up your throw rug, is to use some double-sided tape. You've got to tack that thing down, mm -hmm. or you're going to you know, slip and fall. Or if um, eyesight is poor, and this is all addressing fall hazards in this case, if eyesight is poor um, and you have stairs, reflective tape that you can put on the steps to help them um, see better the stairs, the risers on the stairs, or night lights are really good. When you get up to go to the bathroom at night or if it's dark, whenever, you have a night light. So those are things that we will help them ad address with them. And a healthy homes assessment is, you, is always, I should say, non-code related issues. There may be code related issues and when I say code related, there needs to be, um, like I said, a handrail and things like that. So we will address code related issues, but this is gonna be from a non-code standard because we're not trying to, to deter anyone from seeking our help. Um, we provide when possible, and we, can't, we don't always have this, but when possible, we will try to provide them with toolkit items. The toolkit items may be a tub rail that they can put on their tub, or we may provide them some light bulbs, or whatever we happen to have. Um, we have raised toilet seats and things like that that we can provide for that, them. That's, that was my next question, Right, is to take the assessment. In many cases, a lot of seniors are really on a real tight mm -hmm. uh, monthly budget. And so do you have resources or do you have some connections that after you make an assessment that you could reference those seniors to? Yeah, well, yes, uh, in both cases. So we have some resources that we can use ourselves. And it, but it, given that this is public health and government money, we, I can't always promise that we have it. So when we have it, we will offer things like shower chairs and 
the shower wand so you don't have to stand up. You can sit down and take a shower and things like that. For larger issues, like uh, maybe there's a wheelchair ramp that's needed, we don't have the money for those sort of things. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is refer them out. Sometimes we'll refer them to SACOA. Um, there's other organizations that, volunteer organizations that we can refer them to. Um, or some housing organizations. But again, money is always tight on those. So it really just depends. But we try to help them out with smaller things where we can. Um, as for respiratory issues, when some, and I'm sorry, let me back up. For all of the things that we do with the seniors, we, pro we, we do case management. So we're visiting them on a regular basis. Right. We go out, we mm -hmm. provide them education, we provide follow-up, we make sure that their toolkit items that we provide them are in place. Um, and then we will follow them over a period of time, really up to about three years, although the frequency of our calls and follow-ups follow will um, not be as often. But we will follow them to make sure that they are still doing okay and provide the, the assistance that they need to stay in the home. And if there's a new barrier that came up, we will try to address that. Um, and then as for respiratory issues, things like uh, pest infestations, mold and moisture issues, those are all environment, environmental issues that we can address as well. Pest infestation, you just got to close up the portals in which they're getting in or mm -hmm. stop feeding them or giving them water, you know, a trash can with a lid on top for the mm -hmm. kitchen, those sort of things are the things that we deal with and that we address with the seniors. Bed bugs. Bed bugs are a fun one. And uh, people, I, for whatever reason, really are interested in their bed bugs. We don't treat for bed bugs, but we provide uh, the education necessary, and that's a tough one sometimes because the behaviors of occupants in a home can invite those bed bugs back over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually working on, and hopefully, we'll be able to be able to address bed bugs really. Um, I, I think more forcefully in the future, but for right now. Um, what we do is we provide education. So if you think about a, a, a home, and the cost of treating bed bugs can, be, can vary, but it can get, get pretty expensive. What we like to do before it gets really out of control is we ask the families to do, you know, if you see a bed bug, kill it, get rid of it that way. There are other small things that they can do. And one of my favorite examples is, you know, you want to get some rest. You can't rest when something's eating on you at night. So what you do is you can move your bed, vacuum your floor, clean it however you do it, clean it really, really well, move your bed away from the wall, get double-sided tape. Uh, you got to make sure your bed is clean too. Get double-sided tape, put it all around your bed, and then when you go to bed at night, at least you can have a good night's sleep because the bed bugs that are crawling towards you are going to get stuck on that double-sided tape and they're not going to be able to get you. At least you can have some sleep that night. Vacuuming well. Um, decluttering, but in some cases when all else fails, you're going to have to call in a, a pest control operator and that can get expensive. And in some cases in apartments, that can get you evicted and uh, that's one of the unfortunate realities of that. Now Carla, for all of these things, um, can a family member call or does the senior have to call? Oh, for seniors, no. Family uh, anybody can call. Uh, a, a physician, a family member, or the senior, him or herself, can give us a call, and um, you know we can do an assessment. And they have to be able to they have to be able to live in their home independently, but may be at imminent risk of losing that independence if some of these other areas are not addressed. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we fall in as identifying them and getting them the resources necessary to address them. And for those who might be afraid, because as you said, it's not a cold violation uh, issue, but for some that might be afraid, well, I don't want them to come in because they're going to see something, what would you say to them? We're not going to be addressing code violations uh, in our Healthy Homes Assessment. Our, our goal is not to kick anyone out of their home. Our goal, is specifically for this program even more so, is to make sure that they can stay there. So. Um, if there are in a rental home and there are things that they would like for us to work with with their landlord, we can certainly do that. But our goal is to work with them to stay in their home. Not to get anyone evicted. No, yeah. never, That's never, never. Is Who are you going to call? Uh, Marion County Marion Health Ca Department. Marion County Health Department, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they'll get out there and, and help you, make an assessment, mm -hmm. and do what is necessary. Yes. Uh, you want to say something to your aunt, Jeanette, before we go? I want to say, hi, Aunt Jeanette. <laughs> I hope you're watching. I love you. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Aunt Jeanette. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I hope you're watching. <laughs> all right. You've been a great guest. You have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And you all have been great, too. Stay with us. We'll be back with The Rundown.
Welcome back, and thanks for joining us for Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. And I'm your executive producer, Faith McKinney. Very informative show. It was. With the Marion, Health County, My, Marion County Health Department. Yeah, I thought it was very informative. I think uh, Marion County Health Department has a lot of things that people can uh, tap into if they uh, are not afraid to, to let let, let them know what's going on. And in I many think cases, most people are f afraid, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, most of our seniors are. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a, a stigma out there that when people come to your home, mm -hmm. that it's about code and violation. Uh, but here we found out something totally different. It's not about eviction. It's not about code or violation. It's about helping them to function mm -hmm. in their homes, which is great. And I think, uh, Dr. Moore, our seniors, particularly those who are, have pastors, they right. get their pastors involved. Right. Uh, if they're afraid to make the call. Yeah. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think idea. it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. A lot of services there. Um, really impressed uh, with all of it. Yeah. But it's it's availing, people availing themselves to free services. Yeah. Fr These, yeah. This, this doesn't assessments, cost. Free assessments. Yeah. Free assessments. And then there are some, some items that they will make sure you have that will help you uh, get started in, in making your home a place where you can uh, function more freely as a senior. Yeah, and even if you're not a senior, I, I think it was uh, interesting information about how to catch the or deal with the bed bugs. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> off uh, when we were offset, most people were very uh, uh, astounded by how mm -hmm. that situation can happen. Yeah, where you can deal with it um, before you have to have professionals come in. Right. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us, and we want to thank our sponsors, Lee Kossel and Crowley. And we're also the Fervent Care Christian Academy and Marion County Health Department for being with us today and being one of our sponsors and Martin Gibble University. Martin Gibble University. Gibble 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 is coming up real soon. Thank you. We'll see you next time.